You look around this room, it's a great day. It's a great day. Uh, yesterday was beautiful too. Um, I had the opportunity uh, uh, to go myself and um, Chris Wright and one of his sons and, and, uh, and Edward Johnson, a missionary. We all went and we went some of the, with some of the newcomer families to our church. And it's Rivertown Church, so we went Rivertown Rafting yesterday. And so um, uh, we came back from that and we walked across Broadway. And we went uh, over to the little Mexican restaurant and sat down outside. And uh, it was very crowded, and there was a guy standing there, and I thought maybe they were finished. And I asked him, are you coming or going? He said, well, we're leaving. So we sat down, and Edward wondered what I was doing because I sat down before they cleared the table. But that's what I, you know, I don't want somebody else to get the table. So I sat down, and they got the table cleared outside eventually. And, um, and I looked up. And there was a man walking toward me. And he looked at me and I looked at him. And the Spirit of God just stopped me. And he didn't stop me for me. He stopped me for you. Because he wanted to do something for you today. And uh, the man had a, had a little piece of paper in his hand. Just walking, carrying it in his hand. I'm going to show you his picture. This is Joseph. And that's Joseph. Oh, my God. Come on up, Joseph. Joseph, tell me about this piece of paper that's in your hand. Oh, stole my wheel of you, which, 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 which is gold. No matter what, we all gonna go through trial and tribulation. Amen. But I will never give up. Amen. I will always have hope. Mm. With faith. The sons of time hope before they ever did a thing not say. Right. Because you know, I don't like being out here rich. This is temporary for me. Amen. I want to go up to the kingdom of God. Glory. With the hope that I have today. Amen. And I just thank the Lord for this day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We will sing praise and rejoice. Yes, yes. And also, I just thank the Lord for dying on the cross for my sins. Amen. And also, I thank the Lord for them three days that he arose from the grave with Easter. With all power in his hand. And I just thank the Lord for the 23rd Psalm. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He already know what I want. But I still don't keep hope. Amen. And I just thank the Lord for being on top of the ground. I mean on top of the ground, then on the ground. I know today it's God. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, back in, back in my day, Say them had me tied up. You know, well, I cut on my shit. But I don't feel that way now. Well, if you go, all things are possible. Amen. That can strengthen me. Amen. But I won't give up. I'm going to keep striving for the day. Whatsoever, whatsoever asked for shall be given. And I just thank the Lord today that I believe in the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And today, I stand here, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be born again. I want the Lord to create in me a new hope. Right now. And, and, and I did thank Pastor, meeting him yesterday on Broadway, and giving me the opportunity to come here and, and come here to this church. I believe in my heart today. Is my church too. Is my church too. And then, and then where I want to be, and I don't want to hold y'all up no more. <laughs> <laughs> this morning is my church, my team, and my team. <laughs> Joseph was here first. <laughs> Say it with me. My church, my team, my Jesus.
the reason why God directed me in my life to be a church starter, we started a church um, in the movie theater, a Hollywood Connection, almost 15 years ago. And that church has become this church plus two more. And I really believe at one point I would just be a, a preaching, traveling, evangelist missionary. But God showed me I had started... I had started serving Jesus when I was 15 years old and witnessing in my high school right up the street from me. And many of my friends came to know Christ as Savior. And, and since then, I, when we came back here and then when this land was found here, I said, oh, Lord God, I, I guess I hadn't made it too far from high school. But the real thing is this. You have to love your city to reach your city. You have to love the people of your city for Jesus to love the people in your city through you. And if you don't love people, you'll never love your city. And if you don't love people and you don't love your city, you can't love Jesus. Because the way that you love Jesus is through loving people and loving Amen. your city. Amen. Now look over here and I see Nathan. Um, many years ago when Nathan first came to our church, it was Halloween time. And uh, Nathan had the idea not to do trick or treat, but to do trick or cane. And it was to go from door to door and get cans. And say, I don't want a candy, I want a can. Trick or can. And he came to the people in our church, especially the ladies, and said, um, I'd like for everybody to take all these cans and turn them into casseroles. And we're going to go and have a big dinner banquet on the bridge. And the ladies in our church said, Nathan, that is the big, biggest giant conglomeration of cans we have ever seen. And uh, would you mind if we did something a little bit different? And Nathan said, I don't care what you do. I just brought you cans. You can have to do whatever you want. And then Banquet on the Bridge was the gun. With, with Nathan Eagle and his family, the Rivertown Church family, and Nathan went and got this church, that, involved, that church involved, and this other church involved, and this other church involved, and another church involved. It's been wonderful. A few weeks ago, there was a man who I invited to come to our church. His name is uh, Andrew Chalmers. And uh, I have seen many things happen in this city that I love. And I've seen many people start something and then not really complete it. And I have been left holding the bag more than once because this is my city. I'm not leaving. You know, this is, I I'll be here. And so, and this church will be here. And I don't ever ask you to invest in something as a church that I'm not going to be here with you for. And so I've been watching this movement um, in our city called Take the City. And it is, it, it is the movement of God where God took over from Equin on the Bridge. Because God never quits. And so um, on this coming up Friday night... It's going to be the big unity night. It's all churches from all over the city. I have never asked you to go before because I've been waiting to see if they were going to quit. And when they didn't quit, I reached out. And Andrew came and spoke the other day in our church and told us about it. And then Saturday during the day, meeting at 12 at the, at the Trade Center, we're going to go out and take, the goal is to take 500 people out to the streets in Columbus and take the revival to the streets. We're going to train you and equip you and all you have to do is sign up for some kind of a team to do missions here. If you ever think to yourself, I wish I could go on a mission trip. I don't have the money. I don't have this. I don't have that. And then if you ever think to people, why do they go on a mission trip? There's people right here. Amen. Well, um, you can get out of the stands and get onto the field this weekend in a great dynamic way. When Andrew was here, he saw our jacuzzi for Jesus over in the corner. And um, I love a man who sees the jacuzzi and has an idea. And uh, our jacuzzi came because um, uh, when we met in the movie theater, we wanted to baptize people at the church service. We had been baptizing people in swimming pools and things like that. And so we got, um, when a man sold his house, Bill Potter sold his house and things changed in his family, uh, we got the hot tub when he sold his house. We got it because I asked for it. And then uh, Jimmy Cochran, a man in our church, went and got a trailer from Dothan. We bought a trailer. 
And another man had a great big RV and he pulled it up inside it and he used to baptize out on the hill behind Hollywood Connection in the jacuzzi for Jesus. And they used to change clothes in the RV behind it. So we still have the jacuzzi for Jesus. And so Andrew said, Pastor, that makes me excited. Could your church bring the jacuzzi down to Unity Night? Because when people get saved Friday night, I love to give them the opportunity with your church for them to get baptized. And so we just need somebody to bring the jacuzzi downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Bill volunteered with his brother, but I think he might need quite a bit more. Thank you, Justin. We accept. And he's going to need some help. So he's going to need some help. Uh, people like Evan and people like uh, Ty over there. And uh, let's see, Oscar, many of us, okay? We can get together and we can bring the jacuzzi downtown. And you can see your church jacuzzi filled up. You know what I think it's going to inspire us to do? <coughs> is to have it more filled here. That makes sense? Um, for the last few years, we have been seeking in our church family to not just be bigger, but to be stronger. Um, it's very easy for me to use my gifts and just go out and find people and bring them in. That's not hard for me. It's hard for some, but it's easy for me. I've been doing it a long time. But when God showed me to not be a missionary or traveling evangelist, he told me what I needed was a boat. And now we have this church is the boat on the river town. And when people come out of the waters, they need a safe place to be. They need a safe place to hear a dangerous message. And they need a boat to travel in instead of being on the rocks of the river. The river is the power of God and the town is the community of God. You put that together, you have a powerful community. And so this is our boat. And God wants us all to be people who are fishers of men. Yeah. To bring them into the boat on the river town. Does that make sense? Last week, the taxi drove up before the second service. And the Marines got out. And they came in. And I told them, Last week it was, I told the Marines, if you stay, you'll have a great lunch. You won't have to have another taxi. You'll go wherever you want to go. And they did. And they went to Bobby Billy's house. And they ate as much as they wanted to eat. Stayed as long as they wanted to stay. This week, not the Marines, but Joseph came. Does that make sense? There was a day that was your first day. And I remember the day was my first day in church. And I hope and pray it'll never be your last day. Amen. That makes sense. Amen. And I don't care if you have. There's a there's a lady that came back at Easter, and over the last twelve years, she's <coughs> had about four first days of everything. And I and she told me she said this is my last first day. She came for a while and then she did. She came for a while and then she did. It's my last first day. And I hope again, I hope you never have um, your last day in God's house. Because this is your church. This is your team. And we have a history together. We have a future together. Isaiah 55. I love Isaiah 55. I'm a child of the 80s. And, and we, we, we learned about something called rap music in the 80s. <laughs> With the Sugar Hill Gang and Run the MC. And, uh, and at Fort Junior High School, I really wanted to be cool with the brothers early in the morning before, before school in the cafeteria. So I, 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 I learned some little rap songs. I know one of them, but I won't give it to you today. <laughs> <laughs> I still have it memorized. A little run to see I can do it. But, <laughs> but I, I read Isaiah 55, and I thought, Isaiah was a hip-hop prophet. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Everyone who thirsts comes to the waters, and you who have no money come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. That sounds like a hip-hop prophet. <laughs> Anybody here ever listen to hip-hop music? Yeah? What do you think about your pastor's hip-hop prophet? <laughs> what do you think? 
Yeah? You fight. <laughs> well, because I don't have a beat. Because if you got hope, you can get money. But if you lost hope, you'll lose everything. Yes. Verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man his thoughts. And he will return to the Lord. And he will have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This passage of scripture, the hip hop prophet number of Isaiah 55, is the recipe for our mission statement of our church to come true in your life. Our mission of our church is to transform lives into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you have your thoughts replaced, your life will be transformed. And if you seek him or you weren't seeking him, your life will be transformed. And if you stop spending your life on something that, does, that is not life, your life will be transformed. And I don't care if you've been a Christian two days or 20 years. We all have more sanctification to happen in our lives. Verse 7. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and don't return there without watering the earth and making it barren sprout and furnishing seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Your, your church, your team, your Jesus is all about the seed of the word of God taking root in your life. And like the parable of Jesus, he said for some people, you might be like seed scattered beside the world. And it's too shallow. And you don't take root. That, that's what happens when it has to be your second first day. In many years, follow Jesus. In your third first day. But ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as a last chance with Jesus. You'll never have a last chance with Jesus. He's so far above what you can ever think. What you think is your last chance. He was just saying, I was working with you the whole time just to get you to here. And he said there's some others that fall into the thorns and they get choked out. And he said there's others that fall beside the road and the birds, the demons, the evil thoughts, the evil people come and snatch up the seed and eat it. He said, but there's others. They're planting good soil. And they'll reap a harvest 20, 50, 100 fold. And the Lord Jesus is looking for people who are fertile soil, who are soft and will receive the word of God and plant it with joy. And no matter if it's your first first day or your 100th first day, it'll never be your last day. It'll never be your family's last day. It'll never be your lost friend's last day. And the word of God will multiply. Amen. And that's what the boat is about. The boat is about the fish in the boat. It's not about the boat itself. It's about having a place that says, 
You're going to get caught by the great fisherman and by his subordinates. And you're going to come into the boat. And once you come up out of the water, all I've got to see is just your shoulders to come up and come into the boat. Yesterday we went rafting and I was in the boat, me and Edward and Ty and my son Graham. And we hit one of those rapids and the big one stayed in the boat, but the little ones didn't. <laughs> and Ty is not too much of a little one, but I probably still have 100 pounds on me. And Graham definitely is one of the little ones. We hit that rapid went sideways and me and Edward went down in the boat to hold it down because the guy was, getting, was telling us what to do. And, and Ty went off this way and Graham went off the other way. And, I don't know where Ty went, but Graham went underneath the boat. And I looked up. I've been rafting lots of times. You know, if, if it's your first day rafting, it seems like that was like that. But if you pray first and you've been rafting before, it'll just look kind of slow. And I prayed first and I've been rafting before. And I trusted God. Or you don't take your children rafting if you don't trust God. So I had to trust God enough for both of us. So you know, it's a, it's, it's, <laughs> and, so, and so we looked and the, and the guy big old guy, big muscles huge guy, big scruffy beard looked like a mountain man on the river and, and he was reaching over and, and he had time and he didn't see him he had time and I looked at him it don't happen like that but it seemed slow to me because praise God, God gives power to the parents and I looked and he had time and he didn't see Graham it was fine. We were through the rapids. Grandma had gone on down the river and the next boat would have caught him. But he didn't know that. And I looked and there was Graham, so I just jumped over Edward and laid on top of Edward and pulled Graham out <coughs> back into the boat. In your life, who is it that needs to be pulled back into the boat? You don't have to know you can do it. <coughs> because it's not you that does it anyway. Um, and if you miss them and they float on down the river, somebody else will get them. That'll be a different church, a different ministry, a different evangelist, a different person that supports them when they're down. In the story of the sand, Jesus said, the footprints in the sand, Jesus carried the man, and there was only one set of footprints in the sand. Do you know what I think? There's sometimes that God wants it to be us. He carries it too. But while we're carrying them with one set of footprints in the sand, Jesus is carrying us. Amen. While we're carrying them down. Because you don't have to be strong enough. You just have to want to bad enough. And you sometimes you have to be patient long enough. And you really have to never give up. I'm going to tell you a few stories. I'm going to close. Let me see. I wrote down about 17 stories. Let me see which ones y'all want. Last Sunday, um, there was something miraculous that happened in the children's ministry. I sure hope you volunteer for children's ministry. You will learn more from them than you ever learn from me in my sermons. You'll get to serve one to the children, get the better sermon, come in here and get the secondary sermon. Because Crystal, Crystal Bryant, who you need to see, especially if you're a man, because these children need to see men. Because most of them don't. In many places in their lives. If you're a man, read the Word of God. If you're a man and you have children in your house, pick up the Bible and read it. They may never hear another man read it. And you can read it at church and teach them for some of the ones who don't have men like you. I challenge you. I double dog dare you. And Crystal came in and uh, she had the prayers. I didn't even know they had these. Check this out. The first one says, Dear God, you are so nice. Thank you for helping me sleep. I am sorry for crying and pouting and being bad. Please help. Please help me stop crying when I don't get my way. Seven year olds. I know some 70 year olds who still need this one. Next one. Dear God, you are so good to me. Thank you for being there for me. I am sorry for not acting good. Please help me to be, be a good citizen. Now, look at the next one. Dear God, you are so great. Thank you for being there. I am sorry for being mad to my sister. 
because she be mean. <laughs> Please help her be a lot nice to me so that I don't be so mad at her sometimes. That was actually mine. <laughs> a whole other story. But it was an 11 year old, seriously. 13 year old. Dear God, you are so great. Thank you for taking care of my brother. I am sorry for my sins. Please help me take care of him. 13 year old helper. And the 13 year old in there helping, learning how to be a fisher of men in the children's That's my church. When I see that, that's what I think. I want to be a part of that boat. That's my church. That's my team. That's my Jesus. Say it with me. That's my church. That's my team. That's my Jesus. One more time. That's my church. That's my church. That's my team. That's my team. That's my Jesus. Raise your hand if you've been at Rivertown on Easter. Raise your hand if you've eaten Chef Roger Gamboa's cooking on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Years ago, Roger, uh, was never, Roger wasn't married, uh, but he had a son. And his son's mother <coughs> brought his son to our church. And his son's mother taught in the children's ministry because her neighbor brought her to our church. And I had to knock on the doors. And I caught one neighbor, and that neighbor came to our church in the movie theater. And that neighbor um, brought her neighbor and that neighbor's son, Roger's son. A few years later, I hear Danny's coming to town in California. <coughs> and, he, and I meet Roger, and he comes into the movie theater. And that morning, he prays to receive Jesus Christ as Savior. The next year, we move into this building. And Roger was baptized in the Jacuzzi for Jesus out in the parking lot. Because it moves around sometimes. And the next year he was, he was here and, and, and he volunteered to do four-star hotel beautiful omelets on Sunday morning for Easter. The next year he was back in Los Angeles and he flew in to do it. And ever since then he has flown in to your church. Because he believed in it with all his heart. That he put food in front of somebody's face, that you can bless them in such a way that they will hear the word of God in plant. And, and Roger told me this, the better the food is, the better the ears are, Pastor. <laughs> and so he said, this is what I can do. I don't sing, right? I'm not even there all the time. I can tithe and I can cook. And he does both. A few years after that, we were having our home team Bible study in our house. If, you, if you're not part of a small group at Rivertown, um, you, you, you really would love it. And so we had to sign up on a Sunday morning for small groups. It's awesome. And uh, it was um, people's first day, many of them's first day coming to a home team. So I got a call on the afternoon. It was from Dustin Mosley. And all I had was a sheet of paper with phone numbers on it. And he said, this is Dustin Mosley. I need to know how to find your house. Me and my wife are coming. And I was excited because somebody was coming. I didn't know who was coming. But they were coming. They came. They had been married how long, Dustin? Just a couple months. A couple months. And they came the first week. And before Jennifer left, she said, well... I play guitar a little bit and sing a few songs. I said, I want you to just bring that guitar and your songs next week. And the next week, Jennifer sat on the carpet in our living room with Dustin and her sweet husband beside her. And she sang and overwhelmed us with the most gorgeous, anointed sounds. And soon she joined the band, and soon Dustin joined the tech team. And you are blessed by them every <coughs> single week. You know why? Because this is their church. This is their team. This is their Jesus. Over here shaking her head up and down is Nancy Rogers. Nancy and Rogers, Nancy and Larry have been through years of sickness. 
And when you're sick and you're down and out, you don't feel good, you don't feel like going to church. And some people are disappointed. And they walked into church one Sunday morning and the youth pastor fell in first and Nancy said, we want to come to church. We just decided we were going to come to the church closest to our house. There's a lot of houses close to our church. Please pray for those people. And so Nancy said, I want to come to church. But I want to tell you, um, it doesn't work out all the time physically for me to be in church. I, I might cause people to, to be distracted. I said, you've come to the right church. I get distracted all the time. <laughs> and Nancy and Larry do Bible studies. They serve. You know why? Because this is their church. This is their team. This is their Jesus. I, we told Nancy, I said, you, you don't understand. Teresa Hill has paved the way. Right? Because this is her church. <coughs> this is her team. This is, this is where she finds the power and the love and the strength of Jesus. God can do so much. God can do so much if we dwell in him with our one word. If we find strength in him, if we obey him, if we have our calling in him, if we have our strength in him, if we have our trust in him, if we have confidence in him, if we see him as our father, if we finish what we start, if, if we deny ourselves and follow him, if we intercede, if we are disciplined, if we have focus, yes. you see that? Yes. The power and the love and the blessing of God is here. This week, I got a, a very exciting email. I mean, this is one of the most exciting emails I've ever gotten in my life. Um, they bought the steel for the cross, but they didn't do anything else. And uh, the, we're getting the cypress wood from like, not from the supplier, and not from the supplier's supplier, but from the supplier's supplier's supplier. We're getting it from South Georgia, Deep in the swamp. And we're getting cypress wood. Because they told us that cypress is the wood you need to stand up for many years. But the swamp has been full of water since we got the steel cross. And so uh, um, nobody was communicating. And so I stepped in and I <coughs> prayed about it and I called. And I, I told the people at Beasley Forest Products that there was a church in Columbus, Georgia that uh, had been ignored long enough. And they said, I'm so sorry, we, we'll call you back, but here's the problem. It's all full of water. We're sorry we didn't tell you. But we hope soon it'll be, it'll be ready. I know many of you have prayed, you've contributed financially. You see that picture out in the hallway. But I just, I just knew I couldn't get upset about not, caring, not, about not having the cross fast enough. Because I, I just couldn't imagine Jesus saying, please, can we have the cross fast enough? In fact, he said, Lord God, would you please take this cup from me? I, I finally learned a little bit of patience with construction because of the cross. Well, this, they started communicating with the, with, the, with the contractor here. And they said, I got this email this week. And it says, from a man named Linwood. He said to the contractor, to Lee Carter, we got enough big cypress logs in on Friday. And cut them to length Monday and sawed your timbers today. They are ready to cook up at Beasley Forest Products, 712 Uvalda Highway, Hazelhurst, Georgia, 31539. Now, capital now. Sorry for the delay, but Mother Nature was not kind to us this winter. And so today, after the service, um, I hope this is the last week that steel will be exposed. And so by faith, after the service, I'm asking everybody who will, <coughs> especially if you've contributed to help raise this cross, to come out and stand on top of it, to stand on the steel of the cross. I brought my tractor around front, and we're going to put Summer and Melanie with their cameras high in the air, and they're going to get an aerial shot for us. Because in years to come, I'm going to stand up here and say this. 
You see that cross out there? Let me show you a picture of the people who, who gave financially, who came to church, who were serving Jesus in the year 2016. And I'm going to show them your picture. And I hope you're here to see it. But if God's moved you or, or you've changed or you've gone on another place and God's got you serving someplace else, we're going to be talking about you. We're going to be telling people your story because the cross is not about just stealing Cyprus. It's about the lives that are in the boat for Jesus. Before we finish, I want to give you the very last verse of Isaiah 55. I found it today. I never knew. I knew about the hip-hop prophet in Isaiah 55, but I didn't think about the last verse. And I saw it early this morning. I included it. Instead of the thorn bush for Rivertown Church, the cypress will come up. And it will be a memorial to the Lord for an everlasting sign which will not be cut off. Woo! Instead of the thorn bush, the cypress will come up. And it will be a memorial to the Lord for an everlasting sign. They told the cycles last will last longer than the people in the church. So, after all our funerals, and after there's another great big building here filled with people in the boat, it's all engineered where a crane can pick up that steel and cypress cross and hang it on the net building. And the succeeding generations will look at this and look at your future. And will tell your story. And it may be the next pastor when I'm gone, but they will tell your story. About the cypress coming. About how lives were changed for Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you for the day. Thank you for the power of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus. And if you're here today. And, uh, when we, and if you have something in your heart. A problem. A pressure. A... Uh, Something you need protection from, a problem, some pressure, something you need protection from, something you need to be provided in your life, problem, pressure, protection, something you need provided in your life, or a new sense of purpose. It comes from nowhere but the cross of Jesus Christ. And if you're standing in that place today and you're going to stand on that cross, I ask you in Jesus' name that you bring that problem, that pressure. That, that, that need for provision and that purpose. And when you stand on the cross, when you stand on the cross, I pray you will leave your burden there and walk away with not the problem, the pressure, the need for provision, the need for purpose, that you'll walk away with. you leave all that at the cross on that steel and walk away with God's power. And if that's what you need today, if that's what you need from God today, while Janice is playing, no one's singing. You just stand up and say, that's what I need. What you describe is what I need. 